Well, somehow I got the crazy idea to load up an e-bike and come down here and go camping. It's not camping season. It's uh, kind of kind of cool. It's supposed to rain tonight. Super muddy down here. <laughs> Wait till you see the e-bike. It's really muddy. But yeah, I loaded it down and I'm kind of in an area where I don't think I'm supposed to be camping. This is outside of town by a few miles. It's actually city property. Of course, when you're down here along the river, this is public right away. And where I'm camping is kind of in the high water zone. So I think I'm, I think I'm legal, but I still, still just rather not anybody see me down here and just have my privacy and let them have theirs. Here's the gear I brought down here. My sleeping bag is a regular sleeping bag. It's too big and not warm enough. It's just like a cheap Coleman bag, but it's all I got. The tent is a four person tent, way too big. I didn't have any panniers to put on the back of the bike. So I, I got these dry sacks that we use for canoeing and I uh, tied those on the back, two of those. I got too much stuff, but uh, it's supposed to get cold tonight and I don't, I don't want to be cold. So I brought plenty of clothes and everything. This is a new uh, mock wheel tour plus fat tire e-bike. And uh, you can see I got it plenty muddy coming in here. The bike did great. Uh, when you're standing still with all that weight on the back, I think I had about 60 pounds on the rack, but with all that weight, uh, it was a little unwieldy when you were standing still. But as soon as you started to move, it was very stable. I didn't have any trouble at all. Although I wouldn't take it on any um, difficult mountain trails like that, loaded like that. But going down open trails and roads, uh, it was fine. Well, this is a very marshy area. In fact, in the summertime, you wouldn't want to camp down here at all. <laughs> uh, and in not too long from now, another, another few weeks, the mosquitoes will be so thick down here, you couldn't stand a stand still. But it's not bad right now. And the ground is frozen deep down in because two nights ago, it was sub-zero. It was like minus five or something down here. So uh, it's not too bad. It's kind of wet on the top though. I don't anticipate sleeping well <laughs> because that's why Linda and I quit sleeping in a tent and got that six by 10 cargo trailer. We got tired of sleeping on the ground with all the little lumps and knolls. So tonight it'll be a survival night. Just get through the night, and maybe catch a few winks. I bought a new sleeping pad. It's supposed to be insulated, uh, but I don't trust it. So I bought a, uh, a reflective blanket to go underneath it to kind of help out. Of course, I want to put a ground cloth down underneath to protect the tent. You ever watch Steve Wallace, the Canadian that does, has the stealth camping channel? This is kind of like that. <laughs> and as he would say, we're just gonna hunker down right here. <laughs> Always figure out where the door is first. That's the most important part.
this tent is a lot bigger than I remember it. <laughs> it sure is a lot bigger than what I needed on this trip. Well, like I said, I don't expect to be comfortable, but I'm hoping that I'm at least warm. One of these blankets saved my life one time. It was back just a couple weeks after I met Linda. Back, a, I was like 24 years old and I was hiking through, I took a trip through Haleakala Crater and that's 10,500 feet high, Haleakala is. And I had a beautiful hike through the, tr through the crater one the first day and spent the night uh, on the other side, sleeping in an animal stall, which was fairly clean, but uh, it was raining. And uh, at least I had protection in there. And uh, th I had a sleeping bag of some kind. I don't remember what I had. Maybe it was just a blanket, I don't remember. But the next day I woke up and it was really super foggy and wet and it started raining again. And I had to hike all the way down through what they call Calpo Gap from the top of the volcano all the way down to the ocean, all the way. And it was raining and windy and I was getting super chilled. I got so cold I couldn't control my shivering. And I had this and I got it out and wrapped it around me and I laid down in a depression in the ground and that there was no shelter at all, just this. But I did come to a depression and when I laid in the bottom, the wind went over the top. So I kept this wrapped around me and uh, you know, you don't expect to get hypothermia in Hawaii, but I, I, I was hypothermic and I did make it down to the bottom that day and got a ride all the way back to uh, Lahaina. The next day I was wiped out, uh, just really weak and everything and, and sick, but I, it took me a couple of days to recover. Yeah, so I think that this blanket saved my life. They're a good thing to have around. <laughs> you never know, be prepared. Well, this is new to me, this mattress, and I'm not expecting miracles, but I guess we'll see. They say it inflates with 10 breaths. That was nine. That's all I can put in it. I guess it's all right. Almost sounded like somebody walking. I think it was a deer, because I'm on a deer trail and I heard a kind of a loud crunch <laughs> down over this way. And I think it was a, a deer that came by. I have to share the area. Well, it doesn't feel too bad right now. I guess we'll see what it feels like at 3 a.m. <laughs> I brought along ibuprofen just in case. Well, just like an idiot. <laughs> For dinner tonight I brought, I was going to cook some rice and uh, have it with an MRE, but I was going to throw some freshly chopped uh, carrots and onions and peppers into the MRE just to kind of spiff it up a little bit. But I, when I left on this trip, I left those in the refrigerator. Cheers. Well, everything is going to be all right. <laughs> It's not a bad spot, very pleasant. Hey, I wanted to talk to you all a little bit about what's going on with the channel. Obviously, because of the gas prices, there has to be some changes. You know, Linda and I, we just love the desert more than anything because it's dry and it's warm. And you find interesting things. The desert has its mystique about it. But, uh, you know, Linda, we, we drove down there in January, February, and just as we got down there 
to start our explorations, Linda broke her ankle the next morning and we had to book it back, didn't, didn't get, uh, normally we make a dozen videos on a trip like that and we didn't get to make, I think we made two, just about the trip going down. So that was a big gas bill with no return. So now it's even going to be worse. Uh, I th as you all know, I'm, not, I'm preaching to the choir here. Price of gas is killing us all, not only in gas, but in the price of groceries going skyrocketing. So we're going to have to um, play it a little closer to home. We might make it down into northern Nevada as soon as the weather warms up a bit because we love Nevada. And that's not too far for us. It's a day's drive, so it's not too bad. And we'll certainly be doing a lot of exploration here around Montana, which is something we've never really done for you. Obviously on these bike trips, Linda won't be coming along. <laughs> she is not gonna ride a bike. <laughs> but I'm enjoying getting out and she's still just barely getting around the house right now. So there's that too. It's gonna be another month before she's moving around with any uh, real freedom. She's still having to use a walker and everything. So tonight the girls are over and keeping her company and fixing her dinner and she's spoiled rotten, but Linda deserves it. I was talking to Linda this morning about what this channel is all about. Back when we, f we first started, it's just like, well, we usually do some interesting stuff. Maybe people would like to see what we do. So it kinda, it's kind of a variety channel and variety channels don't usually do too well on YouTube because you people don't know what to expect. I mean, last Friday's video was in, was installing struts on the back of a cargo trailer. This, this coming Friday's video will be this camping trip. And the Friday after that is going to be how to get the most efficiency out of those propane, no, out of those butane stoves with those 16 ounce canisters. I know a trick for getting the most efficiency out of those and I want to share it with you. But we jump around so much. Like if you're, if you're checking in right now because this is an e-bike camping trip and you're expecting to see that next week, you'd be pretty disappointed. On the other hand, all of our videos are about camping one way or another, whether it be with the trailer or working on the trailer to go camping or showing you gear that you use camping. Uh, it, the whole channel does have to do with camping. Linda mentioned this morning, she says, well, we're kind of even like bushcrafting kind of stuff that we know very well. We never share it with you on this channel because there's so many bushcrafting channels. But, um, you know, surviving in the woods and surviving in the bush is something that we know very well. But we wouldn't call it a bushcrafting channel even if we started to go down that road. So what kind of channel is this? Linda came up with the perfect term. It's life crafting. Now the term self-sufficient isn't really, doesn't really describe it. Because when you think of self-sufficiency, you think of growing your own vegetables and doing all that kind of home stuff. Uh, we don't do that at all. <laughs> so life crafting and being independent. We've, we've, in videos, previous videos, we've shown you how to fix your car yourself without having to depend on a mechanic, how to keep from being ripped off at a, you know, at an auto repair shop, um, how to make all kinds of repairs on, uh, on your trailer, your RV. We've talked about uh, doing things yourself while you travel on the road or while you camp or just while you live life in general. I guess that's what this channel is about. It's about life crafting. It's not bad. Man, there's hundreds of geese. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about. Water. We're on, I'm on the Missouri River. I had to pack in plenty of water. Why didn't I just uh, filter water out of the river? Because you can't. It's full of phosphates, pesticides, estrogen, antibiotics, all things that you can't filter out. You can't drink this water. You see, there's numerous uh, treatment plants going up the river at every city, but a lot of that stuff uh, 
is just back in the river. Um, there's a subject that's really touchy. Let me start by saying this. The level of testosterone in men is up to 70% less for in teenagers today than it was when I was a teenager. If you're wondering why, ah, boy, this is a tough subject. Don't get mad at me. You can look this up yourself. If you're wondering why the boys today aren't as masculine as they used to be, you know, uh, it's because of the lower testosterone levels. It's not their fault. They don't even know where, they don't know why. You can look it up. Look, look up testosterone levels in men. Google it and you'll see what I'm talking about. About 70% less than it was back in the 1970s. That's really bad. They don't know why, but one theory is because is it's because of all the estrogen in the water. Uh, and how it gets there, it gets there down the toilet and into the rivers. So, funny subject, yeah. But, you know, we, we can't just not talk about stuff. Look it up. On the other hand, women today are very strong. I've got two daughters and four granddaughters. Tough little buggers. <laughs> as, a, as a side note though, when you get water out of mountain streams and everything like that, it's okay as long as you filter it. You gotta filter out the giardia, the bacteria, but you're not gonna find chemicals like that in, in mountain stream water. You know where the phosphates come from? Well, if you talk to the um, health department, they'll tell you it's from all the phosphates that the farmers put in their fields, because right up on top of the plateau here, it's wheat fields for mile after mile after mile. And yeah, all that does, all that runoff does come down into the rivers. I did talk to a farmer that farms thousands of acres up here, and he said, they, they said, he said that's not true. He said that the phosphates they use are designed to bind with the soil so that they don't so that the phosphates don't migrate. He says we can't afford to put phosphate on a field and have it just leach out, leach out when it rains. He says the phosphate stays in the field. I can kind of see that because you know what? You hear all these geese? If Linda and I did a six day trip down this river a few years ago, and I think we're gonna do it again this year. We'll, we'll bring you along. But you take a canoe trip down this river, when you get out of the canoe, the bird droppings are an inch to two inches deep on both shores all the way down the river from the thousands and thousands and thousands of geese. So you're walking in guano. Where does phosphate come from? As far as I know, it comes from guano. So that would be a major pollutant into this river for phosphates. I don't know if I'm right or not, but I don't know. I know that phosphates come from guano which is bird droppings. I don't smoke too many cigars, maybe a half a dozen year, a year, unless I forget one here and there. Um, but you know, I can't afford expensive anything. These are, for you guys that like an occasional cigar, these are called Tampa trolleys. And I, I order a bundle of them for under $50. And, that, uh, that lasts me a long time. As for the whiskey I'm drinking, oh, it's whiskey, yeah. Uh, Evan Williams, it's decent for a bottom shelf whiskey. Not bad for sipping, it's all right. It'll do. I think the last people that camped here were Lewis and Clark. <laughs> there are no fire rings or anything. But uh, like I mentioned, it's a pretty boggy area. It's not a good area to camp. It is right now because the ground's frozen. You know. What would we do these days without these nifty little fold up stoves? They are pretty nifty though, that's a fact. Well, I'm sure not worried about f the forest fire or anything. Everything is so wet, not a problem.
This is just a Vaseline soap cotton ball. It's got some pine pitch on it too. It ought to do all right. Not going to be fancy tonight with uh, flint and steel or ferro rod. We'll just get the job done here. Oh yeah, that feels good. <laughs> it's just supposed to get down to about freezing tonight. Linda told me, she says, if it gets too bad, just pack up and head home. I think I'm going to be just fine. Eagle feather. Perfect for back in the day when they used to write with a quill. You know, I have a friend who picked up an 11 pound meteorite down here. <laughs> they sell those by the ounce. I think they're really expensive by the ounce, 11 pounds. He also found this strange rock about the size of a baseball. It was mostly clear with reds and blues in it. And he sent it down to the, down to Utah, University of Utah. And they told him it was opal. Great, big, beautiful, clear stone. You never know. Uh, it wasn't too far from here where Linda and I found that a great big hunk of um, fossilized palm, fossilized coconut tree. That's from millions of years ago. We got that at home. Pretty cool. You never know what you're going to find on the shoreline. But it sure is fun to look. There's still ice in the water. It's just down here yesterday and the shoreline was frozen for several feet out. Oh my goodness, look at that. What a view. See the texture in the mud here? It's all goose prints. Millions of them. I just scared up a huge fish in this tributary here. Huge. <laughs> I assume it's a great big catfish. When Linda and I went down the river, one odd thing that we saw was the geese roosting in the trees like other birds. They don't have that, those kind of feet. <laughs> but they were. They were roosting in the trees. It was so strange to see that. Well, let's see here. We're heating up an MRE jalapeno curry beef with potatoes. And just in case we need some more carbohydrates, cooking up some rice too. Well, considering, <laughs> considering that I forgot the fresh vegetables I was going to add into here, it didn't turn out too bad. Just an MRE and some freshly made rice. It'll do. Getting a little chilly here. It's getting down to freezing, I think. It's supposed to go, I just checked the weather report and it's going to go down to about 28. And in the morning, it's supposed to snow and then rain after. So tomorrow morning is going to be kind of interesting. Anyways, I'm going to enjoy this and I'll catch up with you guys later. Oh, made it through the night. That was so cold. Oh.
Got to warm the lighter up first. <laughs> Lighter's too cold to strike. Woo so I'm still trying to warm up the lighter so I can light the alcohol stove here. Oh, there we go. Okay, that looks good. That ought to help. Yeah, that's good. Well, I was just looking at the weather, and uh, the instead of getting a little bit of snow, now we're supposed to get up to four inches of snow, and I just looked at the radar, and it's almost here. So I'm going to have to pack up and get the heck out of here. But I want to enjoy this coffee first. Oh, there's the matches. <laughs> Figured I would have had them along. Well, all packed up and ready to go. Hey guys, thanks a lot for coming along on this ride. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you around. Yeah, I got home in the nick of time. <laughs>